SpaceX completes Starship SN8 stacking, Beijing-based rocket company Galactic Energy signs an agreement for the development of an R&D facility, and Chinese new space companies pursue partially reusable rockets. During the early evening hours of Friday, October 23rd, the SN8 nose cone was finally stacked atop of the SN8 tank section, equipped with rare fins. The stacking of the nose cone was a major milestone, as it's the first time that SpaceX has stacked a nose cone on a flight-ready Starship prototype. For context, SN8 should be about 50 meters tall now. When Mark 1's nose cone was stacked just about a year ago, the prototype served more as an inspiring backdrop for Elon's 2019 Starship update than as a flight-worthy Starship prototype. Mark 1, though, of course, was eventually outfitted with the appropriate subsystems to support pressure testing, but blew its top during a cryogenic pressure test in which the prototype was intentionally pushed to its limits. In just a year, SpaceX has made a lot of progress. We've gone from Mark 1 to the flight-proven SN5 and SN6 prototypes, and now the company is gearing up for the 50,000-foot flight test with SN8. Shortly before the SN8 nose cone was mated to the tank and engine section last Friday, SpaceX uninstalled one of the onboard Raptor engines, SN39, and a new Raptor engine, SN36, was seen being transported to the launch site. Later that day, both Raptors were transported back to the production facility. On October 20th, Elon noted that the data from the three-engine Starship static fire test looked good, so it's not exactly clear why SpaceX chose to swap out the engine. Ahead of the SN8 flight test to 50,000 feet, SpaceX is expected to perform another static fire test with SN8, this time pulling fuel and oxidizer from the LOX header tank located in the nose cone and the liquid methane header tank located at the base of the methane tank. New aero covers were spotted on Friday, October 23rd, and an aft fin section was delivered to the site on Sunday, October 25th. It's expected that the aft fin may be for SN9. Road closures are now scheduled for October 30th, and a new crane has just been delivered to the site to support super heavy stacking. Elon's Starship update is taking a little bit of a different path this year. According to Elon, the update should be available this week in the form of a written piece on SpaceX's website. SpaceX recently celebrated its 100th successful flight with the launch of Starlink V1 L14. The launch occurred on Saturday, October 24th at 11.31 a.m. EDT from Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. The launch utilized a twice-flown Falcon 9 booster, B1060. The 100 successful flights include 95 successful Falcon 9 launches, 3 successful Falcon Heavy launches, and 2 successful Falcon 1 launches. SpaceX's partially reusable rockets Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy have been revolutionary. So much so that other companies and space agencies are taking notice and making attempts at developing their own reusable rockets. And perhaps one country taking a lot of notice is China. According to a report from Spacenews.com, Beijing-based private rocket company Galactic Energy recently secured a deal with the Chinese local government to construct a base in Jianyang, a county-level city under the administrative of Chengdu in southwest China. The facility, which has a total projected investment cost of $225 million, will support the development of Galactic Energy's Palace series of launch vehicles. Galactic Energy was founded in 2018 by Liu Baiki to meet the growing demand for satellite launches globally, but perhaps more specifically to meet the growing demand for satellite launches in China. According to Liu, about 20,000 satellites are expected to be launched globally from 2018 through 2025. China is expected to launch a significant portion of these. Galactic Energy currently has two launch vehicles in development. Its four-stage light-lift launch vehicle, Series 1, and the partially reusable two-stage medium-lift launcher, Palace 1. Series 1's first three stages will utilize a solid rocket tripropellant, hydroxyl-terminated polybutadiene, while the fourth stage will use a liquid propellant. Hydroxyl-terminated polybutadiene, or HTPB, was used on Japan's M5 rocket and is currently used on ISRO's PSLV, Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle. Series 1 will be capable of launching 350 kilograms to LEO. Palace 1, on the other hand, bears an uncanny resemblance to SpaceX's Falcon 9. Like SpaceX's Falcon 9, Galactic Energy's Palace 1 will also be a two-stage, partially reusable rocket 
powered by RP-1 or rocket-grade kerosene and liquid oxygen. The rocket will also be equipped with grid fins and SpaceX-style retractable landing legs. Palace One will have seven engines as opposed to nine. The engines are known as Welkin. Palace One has a payload capacity of four metric tons to LEO and two tons to sun-synchronous orbit. By contrast, SpaceX's Falcon 9 is capable of launching 22,800 kilograms to LEO. In an interview with Andrew Jones for IEEE Spectrum, when asked about why Galactic Energy chose to pursue the RP-1 LOX bipropellant combo, founder and CEO of Galactic Energy Lou Baiki noted that the SpaceX Falcon 9 liquid oxygen kerosene vehicle shows that this propellant is suitable for use. The first launch of Series 1 is currently targeted for early November. The mission, named Jianyang in honor of the sponsorship, is expected to be launched from China's Jiuquin Satellite Launch Center in the Gobi Desert. The first launch of Palace One, on the other hand, is currently targeted for 2022. According to the IEEE Spectrum article, Galactic Energy's long-term plans include human spaceflight and asteroid mining. A new race for reusable rockets Galactic Energy is not the first private Chinese company to pursue reusable rockets, of course or employ launch vehicle architectures similar to SpaceX's Falcon family. In September, Beijing-based private company Landspace raised $175 million in funding for the development of its Zook-2, capable of VTVL, vertical takeoff and landing. Two weeks prior to Landspace's Series C Plus round, iSpace raised $173 million in Series B funding. China's OneSpace, LinkSpace, and XSpace are all pursuing similar architectures. It should be intriguing to see how their progress goes.